Hello! Welcome to episode 35 of the Venture Ventures D&D podcast and stream. We are having technical difficulties with Discord, but we're going to work through it and just force ourselves to play D&D through these technological issues we're having. With that, let's just get started. I'm going to do a quick recap. Thank you for joining us, by the way, and I'm sorry about any frozen people on the screen. Uh, last time on Venture Ventures, the Big Bedfellows found out that just about everyone on the train was part of the Zekin Collective, an organization that controls the diamond trade in much of Ixoros and thus controls most resurrection magic. They have a yearly retreat, Crispy found out, where they board a train and have a murder mystery party over multiple days as a sort of corporate bonding experiment experience, I guess. All of them come up with characters and one of them is randomly selected to be the murderer. They are literally murdered one by one until someone solves the case. The murder victims are reincarnated soon after death and rejoin the game. Th this is what happened to Crispy as he was the victim of a magical trap that was in a toilet and it power word killed him and he was reincarnated by a cute little barn owl druid arch arch druid why can't i say that um the newly goblinified crispy proddy and ashwin discussed what they would like to do with the sad sadistic party goers from murdering them to turning them into the authorities they eventually decided to disembark from the train in this city of Revan's Run, which is 300 miles north of Anista. The reason behind this was the reason behind this decision was because they figured, no matter what they did, the members of the Zekin Collective, being extremely wealthy and powerful, could just about get out of any situation, including death. And that's then in Revan's Run. You guys stayed at a tavern and went to a Baba Yaga's Magical Emporium. And that's where we left off and that's where we're picking up. So, uh, in the Baba Yaga's Magical Emporium, there is a tabaxi worker there. Her name is Katherna. And she has helped Prati with his ritual spells, which was identify and detect magic and you will say you have already paid for that prodi and you are now being watched over by uh, Katherna to make sure you don't copy any other spells uh, that you haven't paid for and uh, so you're doing that that's going to take two hours and I, I'm so paranoid about not turning uh, the mutes off on these mics but I did it so I got that going for me. Uh, Crispy, you wanted explosives, is that correct? I did. Okay. Uh, let's see. She has explosives would be easier to come by in Anista, but being that it's a port town, port city. Uh, sure. She has a bomb, one single bomb that costs 150 gold pieces she has Prati, you know Prati's a mm, what would you say an amateur alchemist in training Prati? i'm a tinkerer i'm a tinkerer tinkerer i thought you were doing i thought you're trained in alchemy too or is that someone am i thinking of someone else yeah it's not me oh, okay um so me. oh is it yes Oh, cool. Uh, let's see. Smoke powder, which is used uh, in the process of making a bomb, is for a horn of it is 50 gold pieces. And alchemist fire, which can be used to make a bomb as well, is 50 gold pieces. That's for a flask. And uh, she is very deadpan in her delivery and is just 
you're not really getting a good read off of her. She's very quiet, and she's got a baseball cap on, liter literally like a baseball cap, although they don't call it that here. They just call it a uh, bill cap. And there's little cutouts in her hat for her ears. How closely is she watching Prati write in the book? <laughs> well, because it takes an hour to write a spell, right. she doesn't have to check too often. Um, okay. Because obviously, you know, he he would... She can check like every five, ten minutes and okay. get a good idea of what he's doing. Uh and where in the shop is the alchemist, the flask of alchemist fire that she showed me? Where does she keep it? Is oh, that she's on got the shelf? it. She brought it out from the back. The, the explosives she brought out from the back, and she has the bomb in front of you, the f two flasks of the various things I described, and she's just they're right in front of her, and she's just looking at you. Okay. Uh, no, no, thank you. It's a little too expensive for me right now. We just got like. 500 gold points of uh, diamond dust. All right, but that's all. My character's not and... saying that. I'm just, I'm oh. just reminding. Yeah, but that's all that can be used to like resurrect people if we need to, because it's diamonds. So I, I thought you would need that, that oil too. Don't you need the oil? There are different resurrection spells. They were yeah. using the oil instead of diamonds because they didn't want to use their oh, diamonds. Right, right. I keep on forgetting that. Yeah. Um. <clears throat> So I didn't want to use those to just buy some explosives. <laughs> um, do, do I'm just you gonna want say. Explosives? Well, yeah, I just I, I felt a little uh, restricted on the train. I, I I wanted some something that went boom, and I didn't have anything. So. Well, I but, I can uh, help you buy it if you want it. It's it's a little pricey. I, I'll keep shopping around. Maybe maybe in the next I'll find something better. I'm gonna I'm gonna go outside and get some fresh air, and I'll wait for Prouty outside and do other things while I'm out there. Okay. <laughs> uh, Ashwin, what would you like to do while you wait? You you mentioned something like alchemist thingy. Alchemist Sorry. fire, which uh, I believe is in D and D Beyond. I'll look it up real quick. What the actual mechanical fire damage is. It is, it's a flask of it, and it, uh, you can throw it up to 20 feet, shattering it on impact, and the target takes 1d4 fire damage at the start of each of its turns. Uh, a creature can end this damage by using its action to make a DC 10 dexterity check to extinguish the flames. By the way, people, we're, we're just going to see people turning their video on and off so just because of these discord issues so uh hopefully that's all we see in terms of our technical difficulties so what do you think ashwin about that how much is it 50 gold pieces of course you can try and negotiate if you like Yeah. So, how about how about how about forty gold pieces? How does that sound? Make a persuasion check as Katherna looks down at you. Her facial expressions don't seem to be changing very much. And eleven. Eleven. She does not. She just says, "This is the price." they give me to sell this. I don't have much control over this type of item. Okay, fine. Here you go. Okay. Mark it off and then you can add a flask of alchemist fire to your equipment. Um... Hmm. Lex, can you refresh your video real quick? And uh, what would you like to do, Crispy, outside? I would like to go around back 
um, to the, the back of the building, mm -hmm. if, if I can do that. Mm -hmm. uh, what, what's the back look like, where I imagine uh, the back storeroom is? Yeah, are there there's... Any, are there any windows? Are there any thing like that? Yeah, there's a window. Uh, it seems like there's uh, two back rooms that are smaller than the main part that you were in of the store. Uh, there's okay. also a stairway back there that leads up to a second level. That's the stairway is not going down into the lower floor. It's an outdoor stairway. Uh, gotcha. And the window um, is a four pane window with the typical cross you might see. Sure. And it's frosted glass. Okay. Um, so there's two of them. Is it clear which one she had gone into um, to uh, pull out the, the supplies? Make an intelligence check or investigation. Uh, it's decent 16 uh, for both. You think it's, you think it's uh, the window to the right of the... Uh, boarded up door that is there so all right i will sneakily approach the window yep and check it for any traps that i may see in so stealth i imagine stealth and investigation stealth is 25 yeah uh investigation if you want to go ahead and do that roll my modifier is plus zero Uh, you're confident you're being quiet as a mouse? I probably shouldn't use that analogy with Ashwin in the party. Uh, it's not offensive, don't worry. Okay, excellent. Uh, Ashwin says, looking up. Uh, <laughs> uh, Crispy, this window, you think there's, you're not sure what what is going on with it if it's mortared shut or something is made maybe it's magically sealed but you're not sure you can continue your stealth uh if you want to open it you think there would most definitely be some force applied to the window you would and noise would be had. Gotcha, gotcha. Um, no, no, no. All right, I'll just go back to the front and wait for Prati. Do you want to go inside, or you're just gonna stick out? No, I'll just wait outside. Okay. Um, if you guys don't want to do anything else. I will fast forward a little bit. I would like to pop in one more time, actually. Okay. And just like to ask uh, Katherna, uh, do you do you have any sort of teleportation circles to other Baba Yaga locations? Uh, that would be you would need. I think the Gateway Bridge College has a teleportation circle. Oh sure, we we're gonna go there. I just thought maybe you. Uh... You might have a back door to other, you know, to the headquarters. We're just trying to go to Baba Yaga's in Anista. For Baba Yaga. She called us there. And she just gives you, like, a I don't quite believe you type look. And she says, even if that was true, I don't, I wouldn't risk my job to, to even attempt to send strangers into another Especially Bobby Yacht. I don't even know why I'm addressing this issue. Uh, well, fair, fair enough. We'll go to the college. Sorry to bother you. Bye. Bye. <laughs> and about halfway into your spell making uh, progress, Prodi, uh, Crispy, actually, you see a hobgoblin and two bulky. Uh, thugs essentially walking up to the store and the hobgoblin looks at you crispy 
kind of like, what what is this? And I just sneer back at him. And when you do that, he looks down at you, and he says, Do you really not understand what you are? And he walks in, and before, like, immediately, and uh, inside, the hobgoblin walks in and approaches Katherna, and Katherna gets a little nervous, and she maintains some sort of a sort of uh, composure, but she's definitely shown more emotion now that these three have walked in and the hobgoblin walks up to her, kind of ignoring you, Ashwin, and you, Prati, and uh, says to Katherna, do you have our equipment yet? And Katherna says, I don't have your equipment yet. I told you it would be here in the next shipment. And you haven't finished. You haven't even began to pay what you owe for the items. And the hobgoblin interrupts and says, Consider it a... Uh, consider it... Payment for protection, Katherna. We'll give you half of what we agreed upon and call it at that. Uh, and Kather Prati's hearing this. Yeah, Ashwin and Prati and Crispy, if Crispy chooses to. I'm poking my head in. Yeah, is hearing we'll this. Let's see what they're doing. And uh, Katherna says, there, There's nothing. I can't. How do you expect me to account for that in any sort of way? And uh, the hobgoblin says, Constrictor doesn't care how you account for it. I'm just telling you how it's going to be, Katherna. And the two thugs are being smug as possible and Katherna says well I have I have the part of the equipment you requested so just give me a second I'll go get it and uh, she goes to the back and Constrictor and the two thugs whom he refers to as fangs and poison like some sort of corny, corny ass gang alias will start perusing the store while they wait. Anything you guys would like to do or just stay out of it? Um, Prodi just keeps on writing uh, in his spell book, but he's, he's paying attention. Okay. And then Ashwin? Uh, watch them as they're going down seeing if like they're they're stealing anything fangs one of the thugs uh you notice also they have uh some real shitty patches on their clothes on their leather armor the thugs have leather armor and the hobgoblin is wearing plate and they have really shitty patches that have a silver snake on them uh because i want to name joke gangs after Legends of the Hidden Temple uh, team names. So, uh, yeah. Uh, Fangs is just knocking stuff over on various mm -hmm. shells. Prati, Prati just, he's trying to, he's trying to concentrate on writing, but he just, he, the books hit the ground and he's just, he just has that like, OCD like and he starts just like ruffling his feathers and he just he's just he's like right about to pop and poison walks up to you and says thanks <laughs> looks like we got a bird problem and <laughs> <laughs> and uh poison poison comes over to you oh thanks looks like this bird can read and <laughs> And Fang says, <laughs> Fang says, I don't believe it, Poison. 
and uh, the hobgoblin's not <laughs> saying anything. Oh he's just kind of watching. And, uh, yeah, they just continue, and poison is just kind of uh, looming over you. Yeah, I, uh, about that Roddy point. just cannot take it anymore. Okay, go ahead, Crispy. Well, I, I don't like Prouty being ganged up on like this, so I'm standing at the entrance, and they hear the pitter-patter of little feet scamping across the floor <laughs> <laughs> as I leap up and try to drop kick poison in the head. Okay, <laughs> everyone roll nice. initiative. <laughs> Sweet. I'm a if you didn't smaller, do it, I, I was to about to. <laughs> Had some initiative rolls right there. Dang. 17 18 with advantage. Uh, so that's 22. 22 my... crispy. 20 to 15. Anyone in the 20 to 15 range? I ran out of 20. 15. Nice. You got 15, Ashwin? Yeah. instead which part did you miss oh he just said it looks like we have a bird problem he came up to me and started making fun of the fact yeah. that i'm a kenku okay and i got that part read. and then like everything got cut off i was like Ugh. he just said uh oh. he said it was just more bird insults like oh this bird can read yeah they're just picking on prati so yeah, i ran like... up behind him and tried to drop kick him in the head well, that's what I'm gonna try to do at least. Uh, roll your, <laughs> roll your damage. Right, are you gonna fly forward instead? What'd you say? Are you gonna go flying forward instead? Well, hopefully not. Hopefully, I actually connect with his head. Uh, this will be like a uh, surprise round, crispy. So. Oh, cool. So just roll your attack and damage. Oh, well, the attack is a. So that's 17. Yep. AC is 11 on these thugs. Oh, cool. Okay, so first hit. It's weak as can be. Five points of damage for the first hit. I turn around and I punch him right in the crotch. He deserves it. Um, and that's going to hit 14 plus 9. And that's 10 points of damage. Okay. And then I'm going to... Oh, why not? I'll Flurry of Blows him and burn a key. I don't like him picking on my friends. Make sure that I mark this key off. Okay. Uh, first one is another 14 plus 9. Second one is another 8 plus 9. So the same rolls for all my attacks. Um, so that's uh, 9 points of damage for the third, and then another 5. So 5, 10, 20, 29 total. Okay. And in a flurry, this goblin, and Crispy had been talking to you too about kind of not being sure whether he's as competent with weapons and various things he was able to do before. But it seems from your, Ashwin and Prati, it seems from your perspective that he is just as competent and quick as he used to be as he pummels the hell out of this thug. And this thug hits the ground and is now prone and is bleeding out of his head orifices. <laughs> There's a little blood on your really, book, Prati. It was really, really quiet on the approach because I don't give myself away. But as soon as <laughs> I've made the first connection, as I like rain blows on him down, um, I was like, leave him alone! And the hobgoblin is down, is freaking the fuck out. His face, It looks like he's freaking the fuck out because he's never seen a goblin. It, in the hierarchy of the goblinoids, a regular goblin is not anything to a hobgoblin. And this hob, hobgoblin is surprised as ever. Hey, Ash or Lex, can you refresh your video real quick? And Crispy, it's your turn again. <laughs> I'm gonna just, uh, I just pull out my whip 
Han var här inne på färd med mina vartor i övrarna när jag säger You wanna go? <laughs> that's all I say. And that's your turn, or? Um, I'm gonna, yeah, well, I guess I'm just uh, maybe intimidating him down. Okay, so you don't want to finish off Poison, who's on the ground and just bleeding? Oh, I, I thought, I thought he, no, no, I, I'll just put my foot on his face, just rest it on his face, um, but I'm not gonna actually attack him anymore while I look menacingly at Fangs. Okay. Fangs is is and, and kind of and challenge him Fangs... and I'll take uh and I'll do patient and I'll defend okay. as my action. There you go. Fangs is like, you know when kids are welling up with tears and they're just. <laughs> Fangs is like, <laughs> and uh, that was Crispy's turn. It is now Constrictor's turn. And the hobgoblin. Sorry. Yeah, go ahead. Sorry. Not defend, dodge. That's what action okay. I'm taking. So disadvantage. Yeah, I'm on attacks. Okay. Uh, let's see. Let's return. Yeah, the hobgoblin pulls out his long sword. And as surprised as he is, he's going to charge you and attempt to... He says... We've got a trained goblin, do we? And he's going to attack you with disadvantage. 12 and an 18 on the roll. So that's a 15 to hit. Nope. Okay. And that is his turn because he's a shitty hobgoblin <laughs> and uh can uh his can can we say that his sword like instead hits a book y your book hits a book and gets blocked by a book on one of the shelves sure but your book is in <laughs> the vicinity so no, no not my no not my book <laughs> i'm just saying like because he was making fun of reading. I don't know. Yeah. I just thought it would be funny. I think it would be funny, but I think there's <laughs> going to be a chance that it hits your book. Okay. So, well, I, I wouldn't be able to take an action, right? So I can't make him do that. I mean, like, well, why don't you roll a d20 and tell me what you get? Lex, can Sorry, you refresh I your... I am, to the audience, I am traveling and I don't have my dice with me, so... It's like the first time using this rolling up. Uh, roll d20. Uh, wow, well, two 19s in a row. Uh, what was it? What did I have to roll? Uh, yeah, you're fine. I, I had the number in my head, so I was just going to see if you hit it. Otherwise, your book's fine. It does hit a bunch of books, and uh, he is very dejected that he didn't connect with this lowly goblin. <laughs> And that is his turn. Prody, you're next. You just saw all this happen right in front of you. There's a little blood spatter on your book, on your book of ancient secrets. What so like? Prady, Prady stands up and he, he's going to cast Banishment on, <laughs> on this hobgoblin. He's just like, looks like someone needs to hobble over to another plane. <laughs> and he uh, casts Banishment. It's a... I think he needs a 15 or higher charisma save. Okay. Man, we're going balls out on some low-level thugs. <laughs> uh, well, if he's if he's not... So he's from this plane, I assume. Yeah. At least Prati is thinking that. So it's not going to do any harm. It's just going to... Yeah. It's going to put him in another plane for a minute. So, yeah, you see Prati... Cat, is this the first time you've cast this, I think? First or second. Yeah, this is the first time I've cast this. He mutters some words and performs some actions with his hands uh, that you haven't seen before, and the hobgoblin goes just out of existence as far as you guys see. He hits the book and then it goes boop. Nothing there. <laughs> <laughs> Messed with the wrong gang. And um, anything yeah. else? Uh, 
Yeah, and then I go, looks like we have a bird problem. Ooh. <laughs> are you mimicking perfectly, or are you doing a mocking Yeah, tone? yeah, mimicking him perfectly. Okay. Uh, Ash, you're next. So there's... So you're, like, in the middle of the room, and Fangs, the Hobgoblin, and Poison, the thug, were kind of in the front corner, and you're in the middle closer to Fangs than Poison, who's on the ground looking near death. Uh, but Fangs is the one who's got the tears welling up in his eyes and looks scared as hell. What would you like to do? Uh, yeah, four four, yeah. I know, poor Fangs. <laughs> poor Fangs. I'll, I'll be, I'll be nice to uh, him, and I am going to use my primal savagery. What does that do? Okay, that's, that is um, my druid cantrip, where all of a sudden Ashton goes from super cute mouse. Um, well, I mean, I still have to cast it, but hopefully it works. Super cute mouse to uh, her face or her teeth get sharp. Her claws get super sharp. She like her fur just looks more matted. Like she just looks hopefully disgusting and scary. <laughs> yeah, it sounds terrifying. Uh, uh, to rat folk. Let's see. Oh yeah, that that and it worked. It hundred percent worked. Okay. So. What's the what's the uh, damage on that? Man, I would grab. I would not have the right dice out for it though. It's okay. Uh, that is twelve poison damage. Uh, yeah. Kind of, like, just as you approach him with your claws and your teeth bared, he literally starts crying at this point. And you hit him. <laughs> <laughs> did she just laugh? Poor guy. I did. Poor bully. Uh, okay, so he is bleeding and... Is it poison or acid damage? It's acid, right? Doesn't matter, but acid. Yeah, sorry, acid damage. Uh, yeah. So, is that your turn? Is that all you're gonna do, or? He, can I just say something to him? Yeah. Don't mess with our guys, dummy. <laughs> and his turn is next, and he was probably going to flee anyways, but he's definitely going to run now. Uh, and n not even thinking, he's crying and embarrassed and afraid for his life. So you get an opportunity attack if you like, Ashwin. Yes. Okay. <laughs> Make an attack roll. I'm going to... Yeah, that it worked. It passed. Um, I'm just going to, as he's running, I'm going to take my tail and just trip him. Okay, um, sure. Uh, let me, I guess it would be... Dex save? Yeah, I was going to do a dex save for him. Uh, he rolled a natural one, so he <laughs> face plants... And takes, breaks his nose. And I, are you going to hold him down or are you just going to let him go? I guess I'll say it again. Will that work? Say again. I, I missed it. Or... Yeah, he rolled the natural one and face planted, broke his nose. <laughs> He's going to continue running uh, out of the store. And it is Poison's turn next, who 
is going to do... He's got a bear goblin foot on his face. He's I, he's not gonna move. He's just gonna look up, and he's his eyes are partially rolled in the back of his head, and he's barely conscious. Uh, he is going to point of order. Yeah. Um, I have not found clothes that fit me yet, so I am still wearing just a very long shirt and Donald ducking it, and he's sitting directly <laughs> underneath me, looking upwards. Just want to throw that out there. <laughs> <laughs> you didn't even like attempt to like shorten your clothes or hemp or you know yeah and we were just no in a store or we're in a store where you those things are available <laughs> not clothes you were like oh, no explosives so i'm just gonna leave well explosives we too rich for my i blood. was gonna buy clothes but <laughs> i'm not in any rush my shirt's well made <laughs> so yeah he's he's got the full view, but it's not like he can yeah. see it because he's got blood in his eyes and everywhere on That's his face. Uh, he is going to pretty much just give up and lay there and <laughs> starts mumbling stuff, but he can't, you can't make it out. Maybe he's trying to apologize and ask for uh, so, mercy. So banishment says that it, the guy comes back in a minute. Yep. When the when the spell ends and Prady's constant, he has to, it's a concentration spell, so he's just doing that and spell ends and yeah. I don't know if a minute's passed, but no, we're still in initiative order, so I'm just uh, we're about to be out of it, depending on what Chris, oh, okay. Crispy does, but um, yeah, Crispy, you're up next. What would you like to do? I just get seeing Fangs run. And knowing that, and not staying constrictor anywhere, uh, I just take my foot off of Poison's face and get, and I bend over and like get in his face. Who the fuck are you? And I'll just start yelling at him and try and figure out. I want to know who is he and who's the gang. Or what's the equipment for, too? Uh, po po poison. <clears throat> You're just coughing up blood. <laughs> I, silver. We're the silver snakes. <laughs> do those fun picking on small guys that you want to do, huh? Not. <clears throat> Starts choking on his own blood. Not today. <clears throat> Please. Let me go. <clears throat> We're gonna take the equipment that Katharina made for you, and you're gonna be okay with it. Now get the fuck out of here, and I just like give him a kick. Tell him to run. He he gets up slowly, and takes off. And uh, I assume Prady and Ashwin, you let him leave. Yes. Yeah. Okay. And we'll be out of initiative order now. And so Prady said he's gonna come back right here. We should all just stand right around where he's gonna show up. <laughs> He's going to be so confused. And we're going to be really angry. <laughs> so you guys I surround. Your face on. Well, you've got a f terrifying face on because your primal sav savagery. Um, oh, it's only an. It only lasts one round. Yeah. Yeah, it's like an instant. Yeah. Oh, okay. Um, she just goes all feral yeah, for a moment. <laughs> Okay, so you guys are going to surround where he was and just wait for the banishment to end? Yep. Yeah. Okay. All right, so... I mean, I can end it whenever I want, so I just I just end it. Okay. Uh, as quickly as he disappeared, he pops back, confused, but uh, we will give you guys a surprise round essentially not a surprise round but we'll start at the top of the round uh you'll just smash him actually yeah go ahead crispy roll your attacks if you yeah. like yeah i'll tenderize them a little bit and then leave it for you guys to send them on send them packing no oh, first one uh is not not good oh, wait no it's an 11 does that hit him he's got an ac of 18 with his plate okay 
I mean, it's a terrible roll. Um, all right, that one does hit 17 plus 9. Yep. And then I'll uh, flurry of blows him as well. That's uh, 16. That does not hit. And lower. Wow, those were terrible. So only one hits. Wow, okay. cool. Seven points of damage. Okay. Uh, in a flash... You punch and kick him anywhere you can. Three of the hits hit his plate armor. You're making contact, just not doing the damage you did on the two thugs. It is now his turn, and he's going to attempt to hit the goblin again. And you're not in patient defense, right? I am not in patient defense. I do have my... I can say defense up, but that's it. Okay. That is a nine to hit, so he hits more books, and they're getting chopped into confetti, and uh, he uses the rest of his turn to pull his sword out of the books, and Proddy, you are up. Proddy just walks over to him, and he takes his, his like, three parts of the rod of law, and he just doinks him tries to doink him over the head i rolled a i rolled a four though what am i supposed to roll for that strength or dexterity um strength probably so i rolled a four what does it say so on, your, to... on your weapon by the way it doesn't it's, it doesn't show up under my unarmed or on my list of actions like under like it doesn't show up under my weapons I have two I daggers prob- and some darts. You probably call it a club? Yeah. That's what I was... Um... Or an improvised weapon, maybe? I don't know. Well, no, because it is a weapon. So, yeah. Yeah, club, do you... Maybe. We'll use dex for it. Um, and... Okay, it would be a five. Okay. On the attack? Like, the yeah. to see if it... Okay. I already... Ro- I already rolled. Yeah, I rolled uh, a d20. All right, so you smack his armor as well. And is there anything else that was your action? I just, yeah, I just say, like, hey, you weren't around, but... And I just point at the equipment that Katherna has, and I was like, that's ours. Caw! She's uh, not quite back yet, but you think Uh, there's someone peeking out. Uh, She may be hiding to stay out of the fracas. Uh, Prani, Ash, it's your turn. Uh oh. Frozen? Frozen, your mic's breaking up a little too. Let it go, let it go. God, wouldn't it be nice if we could play at a table? That would be would something. Be cool. Then we could, like, pretend we have tech issues. <laughs> Am I yeah. still frozen for you guys? Yeah, your video's not there, but you're, I could hear you just now. So go ahead and tell me what you'd like to do to Constrictor the Hobgoblin. Uh, how does he look? Is he, like, bright, or does he look scared like the other guys he's uh not as scared as the other guys but uh he's not likely to run at this point oh. uh, I, I guess i'm just kind of do the eternal side okay roll your attack and damage. His AC is 18. What did you roll? I'm sorry, you're breaking up. I didn't get that. Try again, Lux.
We'll give it one more nope. try. What did you get on that roll, Lex? A 12. Okay, yeah, that doesn't hit. Um, yeah. Back to the top, Crispy. Um, I'm gonna try to hit him again, I guess. Do it. So, first one, the uh, whip is going for his legs. That hits, that's a 21. Okay. Damage rolls are terrible. So that's a six. Six points. Okay. Uh, second hit. 19 plus nine. Yep. Unarmed strike. Six. Uh, flurry of blows. That's a 17 and an 18 for those two. Plus nine each. So they both hit. Yep. And that's a nine and a seven for 16 total on those two you finish him off and he goes down and he is unconscious on the ground making death saves and uh we are out of initiative so at that point katherna peeks her head through and says Are you guys all right? Sorry, Katharina, they were acting a fool. They were making fun of my friend Prodigy. It wasn't a wise move on their part. Who are they? They're just part of the Silver Snakes gang. They're just this lowly street gang that tries to extort people, and the rangers... The police force here really are incompetent, so hmm. I appreciate you doing this. Uh, do you want their stuff? I heard you saying you want their stuff. They haven't paid for it, but I'm just going to give it to you anyway. It's just some, uh, it's a adventuring, uh, two adventuring packs, the Explorers packs, and... A uh, couple of short swords. Well, sure, I'll take them. Uh, do you know where they were planning on going? Oh, no, I I have no idea. I was just... The quicker I can get them out of the store, the better. And uh... Certainly, certainly. That's if our brother knows. And I want to go over, and I'm just going to stand, because I'm much smaller than him. So I'm going to stand, like, above his face, basically. Again, Donald ducking it. And I'm just going to bend over and start slapping his face, trying to wake him up. Okay. I'm uh... Slapping his face with your hand? With my hand. He's making <laughs> death saves, so... Uh, you're also a monk, so slapping... I'm going to say you're not doing damage, but you'd have to be very careful. Oh, what's up? Uh... <laughs> Prada, can you wake him up? He died. Do you, do you guys want me to heal him? <laughs> he died. He rolled two oh, nat no. ones on his death saves. Well, wow. he's no longer bleeding or er, uh, breathing. Yay! Self defense. Can I uh, take his armor? You can do whatever you want with his body, I guess. Just don't do anything so, untoward. <laughs> so, Katharina, um, he, I think he had a heart condition. Um, <laughs> he didn't make it. It wasn't our intention, but uh, it's not great. Is that a problem for you? <laughs> Can you drag him out and his other friend? Um, I look right and left to the to the, the three of us who are all like you know two feet tall. <laughs> um, we can try. <laughs> And I, uh, I ahead. grab I'll, his I'll right arm. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. We'll start yeah. Yeah, trying to drag him out. <laughs> we like sheepishly search. We're like, uh, whoops. To cover them? Do three smalls make a medium, Jake? Yeah, I'll say so. <laughs> uh, it takes you a couple minutes to get them all. <laughs> oh, it's, yeah. it's like weekend we at Bernie's, that awesome except. <laughs> I was going to say we do the office space and we put grease on the floor and like <laughs> slide him. Slide You're like him over. Halfway through pulling him at, pulling one of them out, you stop and say you grab something off the shelf and say, "Do you mind if I use this to kind of help?" And she goes, 
<laughs> sure. And <laughs> you just start dumping grease. Uh, yeah, and you get them both out after a couple minutes. And... Get them both. I, I thought the only... Body. There was only one body. Two of them got away. Oh, yeah, you let the... Yeah. I let poison uh, Yeah, that's away. right, that's the right. Body. So just one body. Um, excellent. So they the bodies are outside... You don't know what's going to happen to them, but Katherna's happy to have them out of her store. And anything else you'd like to do? Um, I'm going to add one of the Explorer's packs to my inventory. Okay. Just a heads up to the party. Um, I also want to, I'm going to stop by a tailor and get some uh, clothes that fit me. Cool. Uh, yeah, when you... In the style I'm used to. When you enter the store, you are given a weird look, but you're dealt with, and they have children's clothing. What kind of clothes do you want? Um, just what I, what I was used to wearing, like mostly cloth, leather vest, a hat that fits my head. Okay, we'll okay. say... But it's it have to be armor. It's just normal street clothes. How much is street clothes? Clothing. Leather vest with a few pockets, inside pockets. You know, a belt. Excellent starting equipment. Briefs. Oh, cost half five silver pieces for clothes. Common. Thank you. I have you. some in my I have some in my inventory from the kit that I just added. Excellent. So, uh, five silver for the appropriately sized. The explorer stuff is was sized for the thugs and the. Uh... Oh yeah, and I and I ditched those. <laughs> okay. Yeah. I just meant mechanically that showed up in my list. Excellent. Um. And you can get plate armor if you like, Ashwin, from that hobgoblin. Yeah. Yeah. Would it fit? No. It's not. <laughs> it's non-magical, um, no. so it doesn't resize. And also, it would impose disadvantage on stealth checks to you. And it requires a 15 strength. Do you have 15 strength? It weighs Maybe sixty. Should... It weighs sixty-five pounds. Maybe we should take it to a blacksmith and see if they'll buy a suit of plate armor off of us. I mean, that seems like worth it. He ain't using it. Yeah, maybe. What? <laughs> what? You're breaking up a lot. Nothing. Got nothing, Lex. I don't know. Nothing. Oh, no. nothing. I, I heard you. No. Much louder. Much better. You're st uh, still breaking up. But still breaking up. Lex is, or, or Ashwin's just kind of like mumbling and. <laughs> Mumbling about she's armor. like, she's like trying to, like chew gum or she's chewing on a something, and we're just like, can you just take it out of your mouth and tell us what you? Can we can't understand, understand you. Even Katherna's like, what is she saying? <laughs> <laughs> um, we'll say she has the plate. Uh, whatever happens. Um. She's does uh trade it in. She's does constrictor have any other stuff on him? Uh, constrictor I... has like thirty silver. Uh, oh, okay. Yeah. You can take that if you want. Is that lawful? You're He's stealing. Dead. Is it stealing from a dead person? Uh, yeah, but Dave, I mean, if you died and I went person. through your wallet, would it be stealing? Well, I, I just don't know what the laws are and. 
medieval land. If a, a person's dead, I don't know what happens to their property. Like, if it does, it just go to his family or most likely. So I would be, I would be upset that that Ashwin and Crispy are. It's up to you. Going through his stuff. You, um, it would bother you, but it's up to you how far you want to take it in terms of. Yeah. Okay, just kind of. Um perturbed but i'm not going to do anything okay well i'll tell those photos so we'll press the thank you very much okay <laughs> um so uh fast forwarding a bit unless you guys have anything else to do with so i assume i sit down and finish my yeah you do my spells. Yeah, yeah okay um how would you nope. guys like to travel to anista you can do it. I would love to find ponies, since we're all very okay. small. <laughs> it is going to take seven days by horseback or 13 days on foot. Can we all ride on the same horse? Because we're all so, so tiny. <laughs> That's a good question. Man, I thought I, I was this close to getting that, that horse ritual. Um, It's on my list. Which oh, where you uh... just can just create a horse out of nothing. Sure summon steed or whatever yeah exactly i didn't um, know you could get that yeah it's a ritual it's, yeah. not, it's not even a i think it's like oh, it might right. be a level three but you have the ritual casting thing that's right book of ancient secrets yeah that's the whole reason yeah. i was writing those uh writing those spells down right right so i'll say yeah you, you guys Grimoire. can squeeze onto a uh onto one horse uh, because this is a well-traveled road the uh Inistin highway you um it's a great band name one horse <laughs> like a hair band name <laughs> uh it's gonna be 30 gold pieces to rent a horse for the seven days okay 10 gold a piece we can afford that so mark Sounds it good. off in your currency. We'll have to tell Ashwin to knock off 10 gold. I'll leave that up to you guys. <laughs> um, should, we, should our new group be the Lone Horsemen? With M-E-N. Get it? Lone Horsemen? Because there's three of us? Mm -hmm. Never mind. I don't get it. Explain. <laughs> Only one horse. But there's horse men there's three of us but only the one horse so it's the lone horse men I, it doesn't make but what is that a play on what is that a play on though <laughs> is there someone the lone called horseman. Lone, lone horseman yeah oh, okay <laughs> <laughs> okay it makes perfect sense then <laughs> you guys don't have to decide now but it's an option um so on your journey over the next seven days you uh come across the town you started in Prati of Strew and the ro the offshoot road that leads into the small town is guarded by Inverian soldiers these are soldiers of the unified continent and on their uniforms there is emblazoned on a uh their symbol is essentially a backward C of gold, depending on the rank of the soldier. And it's a blue rope piece, decorative rope piece on the emblem, and a green decorative rope piece, probably made of, of uh, blue gold, and I haven't thought about what the green metal could be. And it meets kind of in the middle of the backward sea and they're not letting anyone go to strew so that's just a point of interest um if you'd like to talk further you can otherwise i'm going to move on um do you want to crispy i think no, we're there'd be a, like a side quest off of a side quest I mean, you don't yeah not necessarily a quest i just wanted uh to give you some flavor for your journey uh, yeah, I, sh I tell uh, Crispy is uh, I saw some crazy, crazy stuff in that town. Saw some, saw some uh, strew, strew, yeah. 
Uh, that, was where, uh, that was where that flump got attacked. Um, oh, that's right. Yeah, saw some, some disembodied limbs go crazy in that town. And crazy. Have, uh, no interest in going yeah. back. <laughs> no one really want to go, though. They should keep that closed off. Sounds dangerous. One of the landmarks of that town was there is a metal frame, giant metal frame, jutting out of the middle of the square, uh, hundreds of feet, possibly long, but half of it was buried into the ground at an angle. The thing stuck out, so... Um, as you pull up to after seven days, nothing happens because it's such a well-guarded roadway. As you pull up to walk or trot up, what's the proper horse turn? Uh, trot up, canter, to, canter up to Innis. Uh, you see a definite distinction between the outer portions of the city, which have newer buildings and they're noticeably uh, not crumbling and decrepit as the buildings you see as you enter the city uh, and this is where you saw that giant ogre with three arms attempt to run into the city and then get clobbered by the denizens proddy uh, as far as the architecture goes for you, Crispy, and Ashwin, Ashwin's been here, but Crispy hasn't, uh, what you see is just a bunch of old buildings falling apart, looking like they shouldn't be standing, but they're being held together by some sort of glowing mortar coming, flowing in cracks in the ground as well, flowing through those cracks in the ground and making their way up through these buildings that are seemingly defying physics. Some of them have portions of their base missing, and there's nothing that you can tell is holding them up except this glowing mortar. And as you go further into the city, you see these fountains that this glowing blue-green uh, arcane magic, it, it's producing it and these fountains are called arcane fountains or they're called arc fountains or they're called um, they're also known as glue pumps or mortars uh, but the whole Inista is just a very old city and it's held together by this magic somehow um, what else do you see yeah, it's a massive city, and as you get closer to uh, lower Atrix portion of the city, as I'm pulling up a map, you see a large wall that wasn't there, as far as you remember, Prati, before. Uh, and there's a town crier standing in front of it. Instead of standing facing the people in front, and he's not reading off of anything. He's facing the wall. And then on the wall, almost like a news scroll or like a, a uh, billboard flashing news headlines, uh, except magical and not electronic, he is reading off these headlines. And uh, let me read this. Okay, you're just excellent catching Lex up on what's happening. Um, the town crier is uh, saying, A new invention by Get Ray Scott displays news headlines curated from Exoros on a wall for ta on a wall for towns or city criers to read from. Ray Scott says she has no intention of making the walls audible, so town town and city criers need not worry. Ray Scott also said the walls were developed to aid the criers, not replace them. And uh, he says, thank God's under his breath. Then he says, rabid cannibal halflings attack Nathixian missionaries in, su in the southern jungles. Heart, and then moves on to an another uh, headline, Hartach to host first summit inviting political figures from around in Veer to Forced Isle of Giant Folk. 
Next headline, quarantine in three districts of Innis continues with no end in sight with the cause and nature of the overgrowth of, of nature still unknown. The wardens of Anista have increased their payment from 200 to 300 gold for adventuring groups that return with proof of the cause of the incursion. Dozens of adventuring groups have entered the area and have yet to return. And uh, the next headline relating to that is Max Morningbrow of Venture Ventures Adventuring Agency, whose headquarters was consumed by the occurrence was quoted as saying the ley lines are being fucked with by someone or someone's, I'm going to switch to his voice, by someone or someone's and it's caused this mess. Who the hell knows what's in there? Everyone thinks it's the work of some arch druid from children's bedtime stories or some shit. Dude in, dude in flu, Dieter Fleet, what was his name? Whatever the hell his name was, it's not a bedtime story come to life. That's ridiculous. And the crier moves on to the next headline. Uh, new statue of a Kenku holding Kenku chicks and torch key points was dedicated last week after the steep decline in criminal, criminal activity despite the chaos created by the quarantine in nearby districts. The statue was commissioned by some community groups after a healthy donation was made by some Kenku who wished, wished to remain anonymous. The statue sits on top of a now active arc fountain that had been inactive for over a decade. The next headline, Friends of Rainbow demand recognition as a religion in Vera Mall and seek arcane permission to build a temple to worship rainbows in the district known as the Divine Thread. Next, uh... Headline, rumors of the collapse of a northern Invir mountain range spread fear among the citizens of Grimborn, causing an in <laughs> influx of Oops. people seeking shelter in the fortress of Grimheart. No word yet as to the validity of the collapse of the mountain range, but stay tuned for more stories. That's very valid. <laughs> Nobody's paying attention. It's just like, oh, I know. it's a crazy, it's like <laughs> Times Square type of busy. Tricknips Transportation Limited oh. announces the final leg of the Northern Inverian portion of the Inistian, Inistian Express is set to begin now that they have reestablished communication with the Viranal Dominion. This will connect Revan's Run with Innis. Next headline, expedition sent to the Caltrop Keys off the western coast of Northern Invir after the shipwrecked crew of the famed cargo ship Plexus which allegedly wrecked somewhere on the islands over 400 years ago, showed up on the mainland unharmed and unaged. No, they didn't carry their cargo with them. Next headline, Roast Barbarians Invade Grim Tide as they make their furthest incursions south in years. And it repeats, the, the crier re stops for a bit, asks for, for do donations, and then continues... Uh, on this reading this giant wall uh, and where are you guys heading or is there anything you'd like to do or say I'd, um, I'd like to go look at one of those quarantined Kenku areas it, the, the, the Kenku area is not quarantined it's um, the peace that has happened in the Kenku area which you know is a torch key points is despite the fact that a certain part of another part of the city is quarantined uh oh okay yeah so yeah, three, interesting three, so it's just like unexplained three. drop in crime according to the crier according to the crier um okay previously the torch key points were you were told that it's a very dangerous portion of the city they had turned off their arcane fountains and it was run by gangs, essentially, like the Dead Goblins, the Biffix Boys, the Roach Guards, and... Um, Dead Goblin? Yeah, that's actually the Kenku gang. <laughs> uh, so, yeah, that's in Torch Key Points. You can head there if you like. How far is that? Um, It'll be like an hour walk. Oh, okay. Um... 
Yeah, I'd kind of like to go check out one of those, or the statue, or there's multiple statues. Um, yeah, there's one statue. But I also want to talk, I like, probably just talks to Ashwin and Crispy, and he's just like, wow, 200 gold points for that other, that other uh, mystery that they have, some sort of, like, nature growth that's, like, yeah, unimpeded. Of 300 gold now, they're raising. Of 300 gold, okay. It used to be 200. Well, it makes me think of uh, in Felix's home when we saw the the diagram of Anista. It had oh yeah fractions that were overgrown. He he must have known this was coming. Hmm. hmm. That Felix. I, I mean, I could go guy. there and do detect magic, something like that. Well, it seems like it's a it's a covering three districts of the city. It's covering a huge amount of of. The city. Yeah. Hmm. And but I mean, I mean this is all this is a fascinating place. We can certainly look into it, but I think we should check in with Baba Yaga before we go. Yeah, I agree with that. Because it sounds like nobody comes back from that yet, so risky. Good. Oh, is Ashwin back? Can you not see me? Your 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 screen is frozen, but I can hear you now. Yeah, you're not breaking up anymore, audio-wise. That's good. Okay. But like, am I? Can you see me now? No. No. You can just turn off your, can hear you. your camera if you want. If you want to stop dealing with that, we just the main thing is keeping your audio good. Okay. What were you saying? Did you want to say something about what they were talking about? Uh that, that, that sounds like a good plan. Okay. And also, when you were looking at that diorama model of Anista back in the under, underwater lab, you thought that the... Well, you heard from the crier that Venture Ventures, which was in the Arbor Green district, was displaced. Uh, which is where you were used to going. And also your house that you were gifted uh, a few weeks ago, a month ago, I think, after, uh, no, it was more than that because you guys took some downtime. Uh, the house you were gifted in Pate Point also seems to be part of it. So you're not sure if the quarantine the affected portion includes your house, but uh, what you would like to go to Torch Key Points first and check out that statue, or what? No, yeah, let's go to let's go to Baba Yaga first. Okay, um, Sarah, in her extremely long sending message, had told you to. Uh, come to her store in Ista, which is the southern portion of the city across the bay, across the Raving Straits, which will require you to hire a f either wait for a ferry and pay a smaller fee or hire one of the uh, Cobalt Soul ferries, which are kind of like personal. What are we looking at for prices on that? The prices for the ferry, the ferry's uh, a few silver, two silver, and the the private Cobalt Soul ferry is uh, five gold a ticket. Mm. Well, I mean, I, I, I want to sell all of this today. I'm not, not in any rush. We just take the ferry and look at the river for a bit. Well, I don't know. It's gonna it's gonna take a while to do all that and come back. So while I'm like an hour walk away from Torch Key Point, I think I should stop by and just look around. And I'm sorry. See. Is that where you're from, Torch Key Point? No, no. But there's a lot of Kenku there, and I just want to find mm -hmm. out how that how that donation was actually spent and why there's low crime there now. I mean, it's it's it just sounds interesting to me and. I haven't seen a Kenku in a long time, so... Did you tell him that you made the donation? 
I was about to say, yeah, sorry. Yeah, that was me. I, after we defeated the hags, they were going to give me a reward, and I just said, give it to, give it to some local kenkus oh. in need. So I don't even know. That was, that was really I don't even nice know how much they you. donated or what they did or anything. So I'm just kind of tying off a loose end here and. Oh, okay, sure, yeah. I don't think it's going to take too long. I just swing by there on their way onto the way to the ferry. One part of the city is, is as new to me as any other. Let's check it out. You okay with that, Ashwin? Yeah. Yeah, that sounds fun. Sounds good. <laughs> <laughs> Rude. <laughs> Word. Word. Okay. Uh, so, yes, yeah, so we do that. All right. Uh, heading to Torchy. It's about mid-afternoon when... You guys arrived in the city, and uh, heading into Torch Key Points, you notice that the buildings are much newer here. Some of them are still decrepit like the other part of the city. You think it might have to do with the fact that they turned down or turned off the Ark Fountain somehow in this part of the city and had to rebuild because once that happened, the crumbling buildings around uh, the area were fell to the ground and uh it's very i would say it's not a wealthy part of the city at all by any stretch of the imagination as you enter the central portion you do see an arc fountain that's turned on and on top of it you see exactly what was described by the crier a generic kenku and there are you were told not to go to that portion of the city because the gangs controlled it and there were no regulators, which is the police force in Anista. Uh, there were no regulators in that portion of the city and now there is some uniformed Kenku and uh, other people, humanoids, wearing... Uh, a patch on some makeshift some makeshift uh, police wear of five points uh, kind of like an artist's rendering of of torch key points and yeah so what would you like to do would you like to I just want to go up to one of the Kenku in uniform and just say hey uh, so uh, this neighborhood's really turned around like, well, what's what's changed? Uh, yeah, we had a donation from someone, a Kenku, and I was a part of the Dead Goblins, and it it was used to bring together the various factions in the Torch Key Points, and we were able to put together a multilateral police force and have decided to come to an agreement where we would not essentially continue business as usual. So we started a police force with some of that money and as well as a food bank and pantry and just some of the services. Wow. That must have been some donation. Uh, can I ask how much it was? I don't remember what it was. Jake doesn't. Um, let me look. You don't remember, Prodi? No, I have no idea. 40,000 gold pieces. <laughs> did you make, did you not make a, like, did you not subtract? No, it, it? wasn't. No, because it was, because I don't think, because the different big bedfellows, like, asked for different things. I don't think it was just a set amount for each person. Because I don't remember, I don't remember saying no to a certain amount of money. Okay, um, I can look that up for you. No, it's okay. I just wanted to ballpark it because I, I just, I, it was just setting up a joke of me going like, oh, oh god, I didn't know the amount. <laughs> oh, that's so good. Oh, I'm so glad you guys are doing so well now. <laughs> um. I regret. Wow, well, I, I, didn't, I didn't realize it was going to be this simple. Wow, I'm just, I'm so, and Prati just like tears up a little bit. Just, oh, so happy to see this, this neighborhood turn around. Just, you know, 
I'm not from here, but I'm from a similar neighborhood, and I just, I just like, like awkwardly try to hug the guy in uniform. It's like it's good. Glad you're. And he call, kind call. of like he puts his arms in, kind of. He's he's simultaneously trying to hug you, but also keep a barrier with his <laughs> arms between you two. It's very awkward. Uh, wow. But yeah, so um, you he he tells so, yeah, you I'm, I'm satisfied. He yeah. tells you that he doesn't know, but it's probably in the neighborhood of it's probably over a thousand gold. Got it. Cool. <laughs> <laughs> um, That's a lot of spells in the Book of Ancient Secrets. Ah. <laughs> um, yeah, so I'm satisfied. Yeah, yeah, and then I, I just kind of like we, I walk away and just doing a little aside with Ashwin and Crispy. I'm just like, wow, like I had no idea. Like I just thought they were gonna like hand out sandwiches or something. I didn't realize they were gonna change this whole freaking neighborhood. Wow. Looks, looks like she did a good thing. Good job, buddy. Nice. Thanks. Well, that's area. This not. This calls for uh, some drinks tonight. Yeah, but uh, yeah, let's let's head off to Babiaga's and get on the ferry. Uh, let's take a ride. So as you're going through Anista, you see the actual quarantine, and you see members of the Wandering College of Anista pretty much standing guard over this quarantined area, and it looks like they're maintaining some sort of magical concentration as well as Aspel Arcana members who are doing the same. And it definitely encompasses, it's an opaque barrier that you can't see through. And it definitely encompasses all of the Arbor Green, and it definitely encompasses your house. And, uh... Holy crap. You Let's would have... a quick break, Jake? Y yeah, sure. You can, you can just uh, use the restroom if you need to. Well, then I'll do that. Okay. You can keep going. Um, yeah. Is, do you want to investigate further what happened to your house or what? Yeah, for sure. I'll, uh, I mean, is there is there anyone on the other side of the barrier that I could do identify on to see, like, how it's, how it's being quarantined? So it's a, think of it as a half-circle opaque barrier. So going over, it's a oh, I can't even see through it. No, oh, it's okay. opaque. Um, but if you'd like to talk to any, one of the people, are there any passerbys? Yeah, yeah, one of the people maintaining it. They seem to be maintaining a magical concentration, which doesn't mean you're incapable of carrying a conversation. Oh, this is like a giant version of like that guy's hut. Yeah. Got it. Uh, Leoman's tiny hut. Yeah. Um, yeah, and. You talk to a tiefling who is a professor in the Wandering uh, College of Anista, and he says, Oh, well, it happened a few weeks ago. Uh, word is, is that it coincided with the collapse of a mountain range of some sort. But uh, <laughs> from what we know of it, the wardens investigated before they put up this this barrier and we are maintaining it uh the the wardens of anista investigated and uh they think there's some sort of planar disruption and it has seemed to affect the denizens who protect the city as well they seem to be less capable of defending the city they can still take down most creatures who try to impose upon the city their their uh, conquering ways but something is happening and so we're trying to maintain this quarantine so it doesn't possibly spread it originated in the arbor green and spread out and a few warehouses which you know are some of the buildings in anista can actually move because you rode one uh, when you time traveled, uh, and he says, some of the warehouses escaped, some didn't, but yes, we, we have it quarantined now, and we must maintain it until one of the adventuring parties makes it back. 
so can uh, can can I pass through this, or can you shut it off momentarily so that our adventuring party can go in if we chose to do that? Yes, you'd need to uh, register with the regulators to let them know, just so if you like. We can let you in and permit you to go in, but uh, there would need to be some record of of your adventuring party going in. I just talked to Crispy. I'm like, hey, would you would you want to try to investigate? Like my my uh, house that was donated to the Big Bedfellows, and my business is inside this this big opaque dome that's quarantining the arbor green um they're saying that it has something to do with the the virinal mountain range that collapsed and it, ha- it happened after that the the uh the outgrowth and everything your character already heard all this um but uh i kind of want to see oh i turn back to the to the uh tiefling and i say like do you know exactly like where like where the epicenter is of the of the of the growth? Do you know? Do you have like an address? Just or? just the Arbor Green somewhere there. Uh, okay. It, yeah, it, something. I turned back to Crispy and Ashwin and I'm just like, I don't know, guys. Something's just not smelling right here. It's just weird that it would start in the Arbor Green. And I mean, I, I know it's in other districts too, but right after we chose to collapse that mountain mountain range, and then it could have started it could have for all i know it originated in our house yeah mm. we should definitely check it out but i still think we should check on the baba yaga first that's why yeah. we came here and for all we know she might know something yeah i think this other thing is going to be pretty dangerous so i think we should resolve the baba yaga iron teeth thing quickly well otherwise i am i'm fully on board we should check that out especially since um and i Make sure the teeth one can't hear me. Like, especially since uh, we may have caused it. <laughs> yeah. So uh, your house is in Pate Point, not the Arbor Green. Venture Ventures is in Arbor Green. Just a point of uh, oh, okay. uh, okay. clarification. Gotcha. Um, so heading to the Dock District now. Uh, you go through Fortune's Favor. And to get across hate point which is mostly taken up by this quarantine there's a thin sliver right on the cliff's edge because pate point pate's point and fortune's favor are high rent districts in ennis uh and it's got great views overlooking the the bay uh it's a very thin sliver uh getting you through pate point pate's point and fortune's favor you make your way to the dock district. You hire a. I assume you're going to hire a private ferry, or are you going to wait for a normal ferry? I was just going to wait. I'd Sheep rather skate. pay. I'd rather pay two cents. <laughs> I'm spending a lot of money. I still have some, but not that much. <laughs> okay. <laughs> no, yeah, I'm fine with just taking the regular ferry. So there's a nightly ferry that usually arrives on the isle of inn which is like the party island uh it's supposed it's departs innis and ista uh to arrive at the island kind of at peak partying time and it continues on to the other side whichever city you're going to uh from there and it will have you arrive in ista like at 10 o'clock at night as opposed to what time is it now? Well, you if could we have gotten there at like one. six. Yeah, not a huge difference. Yeah, I mean, yeah, you guys there. aren't on. I don't think you're on any sort of. Uh... No. So it is nighttime, and uh, yeah, go ahead. You said five silver, five silver, two silver, two silver for the two regular fer- ferry. Got it. And as you're crossing the Raving Straits, uh, if you head out on the deck, you see a bunch of different scenes crossing it. It, It's very hallucinogenic, for lack of a better term. You see random shapes, colors, patterns, but you also see scenes that don't really make sense. You feel yourself going over cutting across water and you're in a boat everything like that feels the same but what you see is 
you're in the middle of a snowstorm and then it will switch to a sandstorm then it will switch to a beautiful beach and you're on the sand moving over the sand and just these various confusing scenes crossing this this uh portion of the bay and uh the city was basically built portions of the city was built on charging boats passage through this part of of uh, entry into the bay and uh, yeah it's just really trippy and you arrive in Innis which is similar to or Ista which is similar to Innis other than the architecture the buildings are all similar disrepair being held up by arc fountains but the architecture is a little different uh, it's more um, Rather than a European architecture, this architecture is more Eastern European and uh, continuing on East uh, type of architecture into Asia, if you were to find an analogous architecture. Uh, but yeah, it's late at night, and um, the city is beautiful. Both sides of the city is are beautiful because of the arc fountains. Everything's glowing. Uh, the buildings look like they have veins coming through them and uh, yeah I assume you want to go straight to Bobby Yaga's you think it's probably closed at this point but you can try yep if that's where Sarah's gonna be yep uh, so you approach a non-distinct building which is flashing uh, BBYG it's a I actually have a shitty emblem I drew of it. One sec. <laughs> so I was going to say, like, I actually have a full neon sign for Baba Yaga's. <laughs> I have built a full scale uh, Baba Yaga's in my garage. <laughs> so um instead of an a imagine it's a g because i fucked that up uh, gotcha. but yeah so that's flashing on this building and it doesn't look open but you can try knocking if you like yeah we try knocking yep uh when you knock a few seconds later uh, a voice comes out Hey, we're closed. Come back tomorrow <gasps> at 10 a.m. or so. That's usually Sarah, when we open. Sarah, it's Prady. I telepathically tell him, hey, it's Prady. It just keeps going. It seems to be uh, some sort of magical recorded message. <laughs> Anyways, Damn it, Sarah. We look, we look forward to having you uh, search around our store for stuff and buying stuff. Uh, my name's Sarah. I'll see you tomorrow. Okay, bye. <laughs> that was my old big bedfellow, Sarah Sierra. So, do you think if we just kind of kick the door in, it's kind of like ringing a really loud doorbell here? Get their attention, you know. <laughs> I, I, I don't I'm know. Let's just, it. just walk around back, see if there's someone back there. Um, okay, sure. So, we'll walk around back and. I start shouting for Sarah. Yeah. Uh, screaming her name. You, the, all of these buildings are, they share walls. So you have to go around mm. the block to go into a back alley that cuts through. And sure. uh, you start yelling. And after a little bit, you're not getting any Sarah type noises, voices, but you do get people yelling at you, quiet down. It's middle of the night, you moron. Screw your tour, guy! God damn it! And I don't think Sarah's in the building. <laughs> and then this guy who was just yelling at you goes, Linda, I was I couldn't hear you because of this stupid person yelling outside, okay? And, uh... Um, Linda has it rough. Uh, I would not want to be Linda. And, uh, yeah. So, you don't hear Sarah. And, you know, I assume, what do you guys want to do? Well, it's been a 
a great day for me, so I kind of just want to have a drink and go to bed. Where, where are we gonna? Where are we gonna go to bed? Well, you do have some options. You have plenty of options. Uh, I, I don't know them. Uh, looking around, there is a tavern called the Fall Holiday Inn Express. The folding, yeah. <laughs> the folding <laughs> mule. There's uh, another one called the Cracked War Chief, and another one called the Scribe and Guard. Have you guys studied any of these? They haven't. Oh. You know how it is. You don't stay in in sure. the city where you live. Um, sure. Yeah. Sure. The one with the one of them is called the Full Chi. <laughs> the Folded Mule. Oh, never mind. <laughs> sure, let's let's check out the mule. Uh... <laughs> how did you... Yeah, let's go there. The I don't know how I heard that. <laughs> it's like I was like, oh, it's like got its chi like to the max or something. Um, by the way, I made these little health potions and burned the shit out of my. I made it out of hot glue and crayons, and. Burn the shit out I of my. I saw your post about that. My thumb. <laughs> the hot glue sticks to skin. By the way, did you guys know that? And oh yeah. And yeah. when you they... fling it off, it doesn't come off, so it just keeps burning. Um. Anyways, I thought I'd a little aside. Ironically, there. that's kind of how they treat burn victims. They'll like put the whole. They'll like dip your whole. If you say you burned your arm really bad, they'll dip your whole arm in wax to like protect it as like a uh, really as like a barrier. Yeah. Hot wax? I don't. I can't imagine it's hot like when they do that, but it's hot enough to be like in its like liquid form. Interesting. I didn't know that. Did you yeah. know that, Brian? Can't say yeah. I did. I interned at a hospital. Like this was, God, this was like 15 years ago. So I don't know if they still do that, but that's what they did back then. You had this big bath of wax, and they just. Whatever's if you have an appendage that's burnt, you dip your whole arm in there. That's crazy. It it keeps it from getting infected because burns are that's sure, the sure, sure, sure. That's the number one concern with burns. All right. Um. So the folding mule is cramped. It's well lit though. Uh, kind of uh, a hole in the wall type place. Um. There are a bunch of people in here. Uh. Some of them. It's a pretty wide ranging. Uh, group of patrons in terms of some seem more high aristocratic some seem lower end there seems to be a, a uh, bachelor party occurring because it's really fucking loud from a certain group of of people and behind the bar is a human woman uh, she introdu her she introduces herself as Amy May the manager of the folding mule Caw. Caw -caw to you. you want to get yeah. a room? I, oh, sorry. I, I, was, I was ordering a beer. <laughs> I thought, I thought my Kanku friend here would love a, a, a brewer if you got one. Sure, sure. We'll, we'll take a room, too. Okay, so she says it's, the one. it's uh, five silver for a pitcher. And uh, a room is, where is my table? There it is. I'll get the picture for you, Prati. A room is, oh, thank you. is, is uh, one gold piece. I'll get the room too, I can, I can swing that. Yeah, today's my day. And Crispy, you're you haven't gotten many looks in Anista about being a goblin or anything. You don't see many goblins, but you have seen some. But you don't get the looks you got in Revan's Run. Um, there's a bigger variety of people in this city than you're used to. But if if that's all for tonight, we will start episode 36 next week uh, in the morning. And you guys can head to Baba Yaga's Magical Emporium and see Sarah and find Baba Yaga's Iron Tea. Nice. That's right. That's right. Yeah, I'm really proud of what's happened to that Torch Key Point, man. That's just... 
You know, it's amazing what the impact one person can have. You, <laughs> you should have asked how much was being donated. Uh, but, I mean, you nobody knows it was you. And, uh, yeah, you might have changed That's something. the way I like it. Okay. Anything you want to plug, Price. Dave? Um, no. I mean, I went to the rodeo last night. Go, go to a rodeo. It's incredible. I've heard good things. I can't believe it. it's like it's like a culture locked in time where it's just like nothing changes. Like they they're still like roping thing roping uh, cattle and like wrestling them to the ground. I'm just like holy crap! I can't believe they still do this. Did I ever Some of the stuff they do is so so dangerous. Did I ever tell you Cat the time I was wrestling. in a rodeo? In a rodeo? I told you guys that, didn't I? No. Yeah, I had to wrestle a calf. What? No, I'm just That's making crazy. that up. I'm just making that oh up. Oh my god! I, I would have believed it. <laughs> There's one there there are rodeos in Southern California. There's one you said wrestling a cow. That's when I was like, mm, I don't know about that. I thought I said calf. I meant to say calf, but I probably said oh, calf. It cut, it cut off, so oh, okay. I heard cow. <laughs> Brian, anything you want to plug? No plugging for me. Just here to play D and D. Because you like D and D. All right, I'm. I like D and D. Exactly. Perfect. I'm Jake Friday, your dungeon master. You can find me on Twitter at Jake Friday on Instagram at Jake of the Friday. And join us next week at 4 p.m. Pacific for the next episode and hopefully minus any technology issues. Thank you so much for joining us. Be excellent to others. Be excellent to yourself as well. Bye.